Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. I'd like to uh, introduce you guys to my niece, Mia Chapman. Uh, <laughs> kind of in a roundabout way, I feel like you're my niece. But anyways, yeah, good, good to catch up, uh, I guess, formally on air, not like we don't text all the time. So, Right. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So I wasn't actually at... Uh, I wasn't well. It was funny because we were actually what uh, you were just at uh, Desert Storm. I was at Desert Storm, and I left before you got there. And so, how was that? I know you're hanging out with uh, Kicker, and uh, Vision Wheel was there, and uh, you've been going out a couple years now with Kicker, right? Yeah, this is my second year at Desert Storm. Um, last year, I didn't get to like participate in the poker run or anything. I didn't really know what it was. Um, so this year, when I went, I got to go on the boat and um help out with the poker run didn't really know too much about it until then but yeah it was a blast that's horrible having a sponsor force you to go to lake havasu for <laughs> oh it's just terrible yeah. <laughs> horrible and then i don't know you've, you've got a lot going on because we got the uh, scramble series uh you've been flying around with that um you know all over the country um, and then I'm, I'm just trying to think, I know you were just out uh, filming in Glamis with uh, one of Red Bull's gamers. How was that? Uh, we'll talk about scramble in a minute, but how was that? I know like Red Bull's had you do some fun projects this year, invited you out to, but how was that? Cause I know like you guys had told me and I was like, you, you had to have scared the living crap out of him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I went out there with Timmy Ann and he was doing a project for his, um, it's called Timmy Ann's hot drop. And so, like, in between these stops on his um, gaming tour thing he was doing, uh, they did, like, different little things with different Red Bull athletes. And so this one, he, like, speaked an interest on wanting to get into, like, a side-by-side because -side, he's never been in one. So never, like, uh, at all? No, never. Oh, boy. Yeah. So we went out to Glamis and kind of took it easy at first because, you know, some of these people have never been in a UTV, let alone out in the sand dunes. Um, so yeah, we started the day with a little bit of like the smaller dunes just to kind of ease them into it. <laughs> and like, we stopped for a little bit and I was like, how are you doing? Like, do you like it? And he was like, I think we could go a little faster. I was like, dang. All right. <laughs> so we kicked it up a little bit. We went, um, around the dunes, we went to Oldsmobile Hill and just stuff like that. But yeah, it was a blast. I mean, the whole team had so much fun. So yeah. Any, any full sins like with him in it where you guys just completely airborne and like scare the crap yeah. out of you? Yeah. Well, we went at like a weird time of day because the sun was in an awkward angle. So yeah. like all of the hills, you couldn't see the transitions. Like it kind of blended in together. And so we were going, um, we were going up a hill and I couldn't really see like the transition to the other side. Well, it turns out to be like a straight drop. And I was like, oh man, like we got some speed going up this. And we go down and we're like airborne for a good five seconds before the car like finally hit the ground. So that that definitely shook him up a little bit, but <laughs> made for good content. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that's the thing people don't understand about Glam. It's like, it's weird. You have like the morning rides and you have the evening rides, but there's like, they, I, they call it like high noon, but like generally like midday everybody bails out of glamis don't it doesn't bail to go back to camp they do whatever go have lunch because it's just it's really dangerous to be riding the dunes like midday so i'm assuming it was hotter than hell out there so you guys are probably the only ones out there um <laughs> but yeah it's it's tough to it, you just can't see and that's what people don't understand they're like oh the sun's out i'm like yeah but you can't see it all blends in yeah yeah it was really fun a lot of he brought some of his team and they've never like been out to the sand dunes then they were like dang like this is really hot i was like yeah welcome to glamis and there wasn't really anybody there so that was kind of like a weird sight to see but especially for april i guess but i guess it has been getting warm but i feel like kind of like may 1st is when everybody kind of stops and like october 1st when it starts but i guess it's been hot enough i guess probably easter was probably the big last last big weekend out there that i'm assuming if it was pretty desolate out there yeah i think so i mean everybody transitions from like the glamis trips to the lake and like the river trips now so yeah that's what i'm doing this weekend camping on the river and so it's like i went from utvs to jet skis <laughs> yeah that sounds pretty nice it was nice last weekend at desert storm to actually like go to like the lake and just relax a little bit like it felt so weird but well, that's the thing about kicker. Like, I think a lot of people think of kicker and they think, you know, big car stereos, obviously UTV stereos. Now they don't realize like kicker actually kills it in the Marine market. Like their boat speakers and stuff like that. Like 
I mean, I've seen some next level boat builds and, and audio systems and kicker literally just, I mean, kills it in that market. Yeah, it's really cool. They have a, they have a pontoon boat, a double decker pontoon boat called the boom tune and they have it like decked out and everything kicker Marine stuff. And it, it's super cool to see. And we're actually um, teaming up with them to do like a pontoon build on our pontoon. Um, oh, yeah. So that'll be pretty cool to do. Your dad's going to hate that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know if he knows what he's getting himself into quite yet, but <laughs> he's going to be calling all his friends. Hey, I need help wiring this. We've got like 300 <laughs> speakers. And yeah. Do you know how to wire me? Because you're going to get recruited. I, I'm going to learn apparently, and hopefully we do it right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is I know like that's your dad's every summer. Like he hates that you guys don't get to use the pontoon as much. And I feel like you get it all decked out. Like he's got no excuse not to go out there now. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the plan for sure. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be awesome. So you had, uh, you had the gamer out there at Glamis. You got scared the crap out of him. I think you just went over and got to go see his world for a little bit. Right. I mean, did you like go and tell him, Hey, like I'm Mario Kart world champion. I can slay you or. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because I mean, obviously we come from two completely different disciplines yeah. and so we're talking about it and he's like, so like, do you play any video games or like anything like that? And I was like, Oh, Mario Kart. <laughs> That's about it, though. But everybody yeah. plays Mario Kart. He's got to be like, yeah, I've done some Mario Kart. Like, yeah, it's pretty basic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I laugh. Your dad told me you're going. I was like, Mia's going to play video games with him. And your dad's like, yeah, she's going to go hang out and see his world. I was like, so did she the night before tell you tell your brother like, hey, give me a once over on Call of Duty, like something like right or help me here. <laughs> it's so hard for me to pick up like how to play like that type of video games and like going. So they went to a place in Arizona here close to our home called Skydive, Arizona. And it was pretty cool. They had like a whole gaming set up and uh, set up in the hangar. And so I went there, hung out and just like kind of watched what they do. And it gets pretty intense. Like they're streaming for anywhere from like eight to 16 hours a day, just playing video games. And I feel like it takes so much focus and the reaction time is insane. Like it's pretty cool to watch, but yeah, they almost had me jump out of a, a plane yesterday. <laughs> Well, I, so I'd heard that. So you went up and I know you've said like, you want to try skydiving, but you, you didn't, you didn't actually jump yesterday. You just went up and hung out or what? Yeah, I wanted to, like, I'm, I'm pretty terrified of heights, but like, I wanted to do it and I was so down. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I got to race like the next three weekends in a row, like on the slight chance of something going wrong, probably not the smartest decision to make. So uh, oh. We made some plans to do it like another time, though. Uh, I'm just being honest with you. If something goes wrong, you don't have to worry about racing the next three weekends. You're probably not racing again ever. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those where, like, don't don't make that the determining factor. If you're going to jump out of a plane, yeah. like, if it goes wrong, you're it's over. You've got your angel wings. You've got, Yeah, Red Bull's giving you wings for real. <laughs> <laughs> that was my other thing. I was like, can I, like, when I do do it, I'd rather go with, like, someone on the red bull skydive team like at yeah. least a professional that i can trust so i think that's the plan for whenever it does happen <laughs> so you went out i know they do uh that's what it's crazy about where you live a lot of people like oh florence in the middle of nowhere i'm like no it's really close to phoenix but they don't realize like red bull actually does a lot of stuff right there in that area because i know like uh kirby chambliss who's a red bull pilot i've had him on the show yeah, it's been three or four years ago at this point but he lives out in that area he flies a lot so you went up on a plane with kirby too didn't you yeah, that was about a little over a month ago. Um, they were doing like uh, their they had their skydive team, their Air Force team, everybody there for their. I hope I'm saying it right. It was like an aerobics type of day where they all just trained and uh, got their stuff together. And yeah, Kirby was there hanging out, so I got to go up in a plane with him. And that was actually like my first time in like a smaller plane that wasn't like commercial. Mm -hmm. So he took me around like up in the air to see the whole area and yeah, it was really cool. I was like, so next time I come, I want to, I want to get in the Red Bull plane and like, cause he does all, the, all those air tricks and stuff. So hopefully we can make that happen. But he, you, you went up in just a regular plane. You weren't stunting with him or anything like that? No, no, that's a later time. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> one of those where he throws you up there and then they, oh yeah, we're going to make you puke. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. everybody, everybody that goes up with those guys, it's like they, they try and either get them to black out or puke or something like that. It's one of those where it's like, I, I don't know. It's funny. Yeah, no, they do some pretty crazy stuff for sure. But don't wear your good clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're definitely gonna have to put a GoPro in for that. It'd be pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, but would, would you actually post that? Mia puking all over herself? Would you post that? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I don't think people want to see that. <laughs> I think I've still got the admins on your account. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'll throw it up. <laughs> oh, I'll group his people out. <laughs> It go viral doing it for the gram, Mia. <laughs> I, I mean, it can't be much different than rolling in a race car, just like much more intense and less painful. <laughs> yeah, I've always I, that's one thing I've never posted footage of is crash videos uh, of me or anybody else. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well with me. One, it sucks because like I know the dangers of it, but two, it's like I know the costs associated with it and things like that. I don't know. It's just always like there's so many accounts on social media that that they've got a huge following because they post like stupid crash videos and of trophy trucks and UTVs. And I'm like, I don't know. Like to me, I just, I don't know. I, I don't want to get popular because I crash or somebody else crashes or whatever. I don't know. It's just. Yeah. It's hard to watch for sure. And I just cringe. It's like, ugh. I know. Luckily there hasn't been too many of those though. I don't think between the both of us. Yeah, it's knock on wood been a, been a while, thankfully <laughs> for me. So I don't. Well, you with short course, like crashing in the desert, it's a little more rare. Short course, I feel like that happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we move at such a higher pace, <clears throat> and obviously on a short course track, like there's so much more in that goes into it than desert. But yeah, crashing's not fun. <laughs> So talk about a little bit about the Red Bull Scramble Series, because I know last year you went and did some races, things like that. This year it was like pretty much all in, like we're doing Scramble Series coast to coast. I know like, um, I mean, you're traveling a ton. You're getting ready to go to New Jersey. Uh, that one, I actually wish I could go because I would have jumped in the truck with you and your dad and driven across country because that one, I think this one might be a one off. And I'm like, it blows my mind that Red Bull pulled this together, building a short course track on the beach in New Jersey by the boardwalk, like. To me, that's insane. Like tip of the cap to Red Bull for making this happen. I told your dad if I didn't have stuff going, I literally would have jumped in the truck and went across country with you guys just to hang out and be your pit crew. Because <laughs> it looks like to me, like that's exciting. But I'm just looking at the places. I mean, you went to Ranch Scramble. You, you know, I know you're going to Utah. You've been there before. You've done the one in uh, you know, Glamis before. But I mean, Anchorage, Alaska, I hear that's a go now. The one in Alaska. I'm like, you're gonna be all over the place, some rad location. <laughs> this whole series Red Bull's got it's like it's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, I mean, we focused more on the desert side of things and did a lot more desert racing than the scrambles. Um, so this year we decided to change it up a little bit and uh, full time doing all the scramble races, which it's been super cool. The first one was that I did was the ice scramble or snow scramble. Yeah. That one was pretty cold. I've never raced in the ice. You hate the cold too. That's what's funny. You're like, you hate the cold. Yeah. It was funny before we went there. I was like, ah, I'm going to freeze to death. Like, I got to do something. So, like, I bought, like, a heated jacket, heated socks, heated gloves, like, everything to stay warm. You're a walking walking lithium-ion battery? Uh, so many batteries. <laughs> but it was so worth it. Like, I was pretty warm. <laughs> so, it, did, it, did they all get – I'm laughing because there's so many battery packs. I mean, did you have chargers, like, all over the place? He's like, <laughs> pretty much you should have seen the hotel room like after the day was done and we, i'd plug all my batteries in between me and my dad because he had a heated jacket too and gloves and stuff so we had like got probably close to 15 batteries plugged in in that hotel room <laughs> oh yeah the, st the hotel lights start flickering or <laughs> i know i was like hopefully these don't catch on fire or something while we're sleeping like, that'd be pretty bad but no. it, it worked out <laughs> Well, that's got to be kind of cool doing that. Well, one thing I like about the Scramble series is they're all different, you know, and I, I think it caters a little more to your your short course background because that's what you grew up doing. But it's not full short course. Like, I think this one at the beach is probably going to be more short course, course ish, if that's a word. I don't know. I'm getting tongue tied here. But like, I, I feel like that one's going to really cater to your driving style. But I know like uh, Ranch Scramble, I mean, Stone Scramble, that's I mean, that's wicked crazy. You've been up in the snow. Glamis is all dunes like. I feel like, and I went around the one in Utah last year because I was up there, and that was different. 
I, that's the easiest way to put it. Like I, I, there was a lot of sand, but it was a little mix of desert. Like that was an interesting course. Yeah. I think that's what I like most about it. Like we go to so many different places and neither of them are the same. Like the track layout is never the same. Um, like we just did the ranch scramble a few weeks ago and that was like full on short course track, like without a doubt. And then we'll go to places like Utah or Glamis and it's more stretched out and longer. Um, but I feel like it's a good mix of both because they have like an infield that's usually like a short course style. And then we go out into like the desert or whatever area a little bit. And it's pretty challenging. Like we get some pretty heavy hitters that come out to these races and the, especially the people that live back there and race and go to these areas all the time and they come out and they're pretty good. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. We get good competition. We get phenomenal places to race at that we've never been before. And I think it helps my skills a lot as a race car driver to be able to adapt to all these different places and you have to do it pretty quick. Well, and I think that's kind of cool. You're, you're, I think the only person probably attacking the whole series that I know of, you know, that's going to all the, all the races. So you, you're against different competition. Most every race, you're probably meeting a ton of people like in the UTB community and stuff that you didn't know before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It brings out pretty much everybody from the woodworks. And even getting to talk to the locals and pick their brain on, on a few things is pretty cool to see how their outlook is. And they always love coming out because it brings out, like I said, everybody from literally anywhere. So you get good competition. You get to hang out with some pretty rad people. And, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Well, I think, like, you know, I'm just funny because I've known you since since you're about 15, I think, 14, 15, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's like I look at you, kind of your career arc and it's one of those, like, it's you've had kind of a crazy like five six seven years like going from mod carts and short course utvs to like full desert stuff and then you know obviously you had the pro light you did at crandon you've um you know done the desert stuff now you've sh shifted more to the the red bull scramble stuff i feel like you, you've driven so many different disciplines of utvs and off-road like in the last five six years and i feel like not many people have bounced around like you have and i mean that in a good way like you're just you've tried your hand at everything you know yeah, I mean, that's kind of the goal, just to get experience and as much as I can. And thankfully, like, I've been able to do that. And yeah, it's been a pretty wild ride. I mean, we're traveling so much this year, but it, like I said, it's so cool because all the different places we go to, like, I learned something new. And so, yeah, I think it'll be a pretty fun year. We leave to, yeah, the New Jersey Beach Scramble on Monday. So definitely looking forward to that. I don't really know what to expect like for a track layout because I've never, I mean, nobody's really ever done a UTV beach on the, or race on the beach. So I think it'll be interesting. It's, and I'm even, just, you know, you think sand and you're like, all right, so maybe like a glamis type setup, but I think they're going to build legit jumps there. I look at, you know, I look at that, but I'm like, man, the, the beach sand is not glamis sand because it's wet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, it's, it's stick stickier. It's more dense. Like it's, I don't know. I, I'm really excited. Like I said, like this is the one I'm kind of jealous I'm not going to. And I, I totally would have because it just seems like it's going to be it's going to be a blast. Like I would have loved to just drag a car back there and race. Yeah, no, I think it'll be fun for sure. It was crazy because um, at the last race, I think it was uh, maybe it was the ice or snow scramble. Um, I was talking to the Red Bull rig driver, Mario, about uh, the beach scramble race. And he's like, yeah, like it sold out in three days. And I was like, what? Three days? Like I haven't even signed up yet. Well, and I think like areas of that country, like here in the Southwest are spoiled because like we have so many different racing organizations between, you know what I mean? Uh, we just have between desert and short course and the regional stuff and local stuff. Like every state's got a ton of racing. Like if you want to race every weekend, we could in a UTV. Like yeah. I think on the East coast, you know, events and big events are even few and farther between, you know? So I think, yeah, like if you own a UTV and you're in New Jersey or, in, you know, New York or Pennsylvania and that pops up, like everybody jumped at it. Cause when's the next time you're going to have an opportunity to race, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be a huge turnout for sure. And fingers crossed everything goes well. Cause I think it'd be super cool to go back there next year too, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes.
Yeah. And then I then see this is where I'm the bad uncle. Um, because your dad and I hatch plans. So like he and I pretty much text daily and hop on a call three or four times a week. And um, I don't know, you and I talk maybe once every two weeks. Your dad and I are almost daily at this point, but it's like I go, What are you doing in July, Joe? Oh, nothing. We got a month off. Hey, let's take the UTVs to Seattle. And your dad's like, This is a great idea. Then I get <laughs> Mia roped into doing a rally that she didn't even know about. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I haven't even public yeah. about that yet, but I was like, oh, it's short course. It's rally cross, like three mile, four mile loops. Like Mia <laughs> like this sliding around on gravel. She'll be good. Your dad's like, I think so too. Let's do this. So Mia was like, yeah. 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 <laughs> he was like, yeah, man, I thought I had a weekend off. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised at this point, whenever stuff like that pops up, it's, it's become pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. He and I just hatch plans and you're along for the ride. Pretty much. Yeah. Most of them they're fun though and they're good. So there's Most that at least. They're fun and they're good. Yeah. I don't know. We, we, yeah. So I you are doing what? I think you're gonna do Vegas Torino. That's the desert race you're doing this year, right? And maybe yeah. Cal three hundred, possibly. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, that's the plan right now. Yeah, Vegas Torino is coming up pretty quick. <clears throat> so definitely looking forward to that one. Um, and then we, yeah, we'll do the California three hundred as well. And maybe try to throw in a smaller race too, but um, yeah, the scramble series kind of has us packed in traveling all over the place, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the plan for this year. Yeah. And are they doing, are they doing like an overall points championship this year for the scramble series? Yes. I was going to touch on that. Yeah. That's the cool thing about this year is they're doing, yeah, a points championship thing for the whole scramble series. Um, so that's pretty cool. I, I can't remember quite what it was, but I think I you they could... drop like a race or something. I was hearing or is it like your best five races i can't remember because they don't expect everybody to go to alaska or everybody yeah. to go to new jersey there's some weird thing where you can drop one or two races i think i can't remember yeah i believe it was you can drop two races um yeah. so that'll kind of make that but yeah that's exciting too i mean a lot of people have gotten pretty serious about that because i mean it's their first year doing a utv championship mm -hmm. series um, so that part's really cool. I mean, I'm going to make it out to all of them. So hopefully I end up pretty decent in points. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, have they been, is there anywhere the points I'll have to go and look on Red Bull site, see if they've tracked it or anything like that. Yeah. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to look too. Cause I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, shoot, all this is going on. Like it, things are popping for you and, uh, traveling around things like that. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I just look back and it's like, I, I know you too well. So it's like, what questions do I ask here? Cause you and I just shoot <laughs> crap on everything. You know what I mean? But I just look yeah. at it and I go, you know, it's pretty wild last couple of years, what you've been able to accomplish and what you've been able to do. And it's one of those, like, I think when we're doing things as we do them, we don't really realize the impact of them and then you look back a couple years later and you're like holy crap i've done all that in the last few years like that's pretty awesome oh yeah it's insane i mean it doesn't even feel real like looking back and thinking about some of the stuff that i've been able to do um definitely very thankful for that and yeah it's pretty cool like this year it's kind of weird it's different because like i said we're doing the red bull scramble series along with like a few desert races and then I'm also getting involved in a lot of sponsor events. So like stuff like Desert Storm, that is just a completely different discipline that I've never been to. Um, so that stuff is pretty cool, like getting to experience new things that I've never had before and getting to look into like different worlds and see what other people do. Yeah. Um, well, and I think it's kind of cool with Red Bull, like they signed you so young. And I know at one point you were kind of like, it was groundbreaking, like the youngest female four-wheel athlete in the world for Red Bull and you know and you know Red Bull was a part of your program and you know you wore the hat you wore the helmet they supported you but then it was like you turned 18 19 like and then this year like last year or two Red Bull's really kind of started ramping up with you you know and doing a little bit more and I feel like it's like they kind of let kids be kids and then you get to a certain age like all right we're gonna start using them all right you know and I feel like you like Red Bull in last year or two as you've got older it's like boom they've ramped up all right Mia's our girl we're gonna start doing some stuff with her and then you've all these cool fun projects and collaborations have started coming in and things like that yeah no it, it's really cool for sure I mean we've come such a long way and I think it's really cool how like when they first signed me, like I was so young and still, you know, trying to pave my way a little bit more. And yeah, once I turned like 18 and started getting older, they're like, all right, let's let's get a plan together. And the other really cool part is they they want to do what you want to do. 
So like you kind of go to them with a plan on what you want and they do their best to kind of make that happen. It's not like Red Bull comes to you and says, okay, you're doing this and you're stuck in this. It's like, yeah. just what do you want to do with, you know, racing? Um, I want to go drag racing. Yeah, that's <laughs> on. 10,000 horsepower. Make it happen. Gosh, I, I couldn't even imagine how that feels. Well, you stand, stood in the water box. They took you down yeah. there and that hit, like when they take off and it just blows you back. Like, I don't know. Insane. Like, I couldn't imagine being in the car. I, that's one of those, like, everybody goes, Oh, I want to drive one. I'm like, I, I don't know that I could control one. Like, I see what they do. I'm like, if they had a two seater top fuel car, I would love to sit behind Steve Rantron in a two seater and, mm -hmm. you know, go 300 miles an hour. Absolutely. Sign me up for that. I don't know that I want to drive a car at 300 miles an hour. Like, I'll let them do them. Like I, I don't need to. I don't think. Yeah, that's that's kind of yeah. I don't know. That's kind of out there. So yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so I do laugh. I saved this. So um, me, so just so you know, obviously at this point, everybody listening in or watching is like, oh yeah, me and Jim are pretty close. Yes, we're we're really close. Our families are and stuff like that. So me and I have this thing where she's actually given me a couple of uh, like Red Bull gifts, things like that. We play pranks on each other, but like, so this is like this big, uh, this big Red Bull um, water bottle. I'm trying to get it in front of the thing, like, you know, with fun stuff like that. So I've got a one of a kind and I'm actually giving this to Mia because she knows I collect skateboards, but it is a Red Bull skateboard. And so this one is going to you. I know you knew I had it, but I decided it's time to uh, pass that along to Mia Chapman. So next time I yeah. see you got a Red Bull skateboard deck that I think came out because it's got like uh, it's got like Sheckler and a few other names on it. And I think they did some special event like 10 years ago. And I found that on eBay a couple of years ago and bought it because I knew how rare it was. But I'm going to I'm going to gift that one and pay it forward to you for all the Red Bull gifts you've given me. So that is so cool. I don't know if I knew you had that. Yeah, but I don't know if you did or not, but I do have her. Yeah, let me let me see who's on this. It's uh, it was like Red Bull perspective. It's got Sheckler, Desenzo, Pudwell. So yeah, it's Dang, cool. that's like, cool. But see up in the top, like it's actually got a, a bull in like the digital artwork and stuff like that. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Figure I feel like you've given enough to my Red Bull collection. I'll give one to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be nice to each other once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know that you want to skate that one though. I think that one's a wall hanger. <laughs> oh, that's a wall hanger for sure. <laughs> so yeah, just don't let your dad take it because I think your cool Red Bull stuff, he likes to snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> I don't know that I could skateboard though. I'm not I'm not that coordinated in that way. <laughs> oh, we gotta get you skateboarding. Longboard, have you ever longboarded? No. No, yeah, we got to start you on a longboard. You you have to skateboard. Like, no, this is serious. Like, this is this is not this is like a deal breaker. Not a deal breaker. It's just, yeah, I got to get you skateboarding. I'm gonna get you a longboard. And okay. I got like I I literally have sixty skateboard decks here, and I think I have like seven or eight built out. And I've got to the point where Addie skateboards like crazy. So she's. We've got so many Red Bull skateboarders in Arizona. Letitia Buffoni's in Lake Havasu. We've got. Uh, um, Oh man, who is it in Phoenix? Why am I uh, why am I drawing a blank here? But, Jagger Eaton. Yeah, Jagger Eaton's right there in Phoenix. I, gosh, I feel bad because he and I are supposed to do an interview here coming up soon. Um, but no, like we got to get you skateboarding so you can actually do. I mean, you're gonna take them out in UTVs, Mia. I mean, we gotta we gotta get you on a skateboard so you don't look like you don't get a concussion. I know. I'm gonna need like a good instructor and be wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> I'm so getting you from Willy Wonka, the blueberry suit, the blueberry suit the girl wears where she just <laughs> rolls around and bounces. I'm yeah. serious. I'm going to need one of those. <laughs> uh, the movie Bubble Boy, where you just bounce off of things uh -huh. like with Eskimo suits. <laughs> Might be a little rough at first. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. We're going to get you a sumo suit and teach you how to skateboard. That would be a, a great social media clip right there. <laughs> that would be entertaining. <laughs> That would be fun. Does your does your brother skateboard at all? No, not really. Uh -uh. No. All right. So, yeah, we're going down the rabbit hole here. Uh, it was funny because yeah. your dad and I share like old school BMX stuff and things like that from the eighties all the time and stuff like that. So I feel like your dad may have more skate skills than you. I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt that at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's here's a question. Obviously, you've grown up in the dirt. You ride motorcycles. Mm -hmm. This I actually don't even know about you. Even pit bikes, dirt bikes, anything? Uh, pit bikes. Yeah. Pit bikes. 
So yeah. you, so your dad's Harley, the, his new Harley. Have you ridden that yet? No, not yet. Would he let you ride that? Uh, maybe on the back. <laughs> that's it. I feel like that's his baby. That's not. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely his new like pride and joy toy. <laughs> we gotta get you riding motorcycles. I feel like that's a logical next step for me at Chapman riding motorcycles. I don't think that'd be too hard. <laughs> get you a street bike. Like we know people, Jolene Van View. Like you, we we got all kinds of angles to go where you all these awesome female motorcycle riders. Sarah Price, she's in Lake Avenue now. Like we gotta we mm-hmm. gotta start coordinating this stuff, Mia. I know, I know. All this stuff would be very entertaining too. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't want to be entertained by you on a dirt bike because that's dangerous. I just, I just want you to actually be good at it. I'm not that terrible. <laughs> I know the basics, okay? I, I will give you credit. Like, you went up to dirt fish and we went up to dirt fish and you'd never driven a stick shift before. You'd driven mod carts. So this girl, we go up to dirt fish and she didn't know how to drive a stick, but she'd driven manual transmission race cars. I'm like, how does this work? And you went up there and you slayed it right away. So like I, I think motorcycles are gonna be the same way. You're gonna get on one and just be like, yeah, nothing. Oh, I know. I was so nervous about that because it was just a different gearbox. Like mod carts is it, pretty basic. It's just forward and backwards. Yeah. So when we went to Dirtfish, I was like, oh my god, I'm like not gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna keep selling the car. Like this is gonna be embarrassing. But it was, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. You know, the funny thing is, I had this uh, conversation with the instructors when I was up there uh, about a month ago. Um, it's funny because more and more kids growing up now, they don't know how to drive manual transmission. But the problem is, is there's only like, I think it's down to like three or 4% of the cars nationally are actually offered in a stick shift. So it's becoming almost like a unicorn. So it's like, yeah, people, yeah it's like people don't know how to drive a stick, but it's not because they don't want to. It's like, literally, it's hard to find a stick shift vehicle anymore. It is. I feel like it's a good skill to have. That, and that's one thing you never have to worry about is most time, like most people don't know how to drive sticks. So if you have one, like, not gonna get stolen. Stolen, yeah. Well, it's funny because I had uh, my Subaru and I was in Vegas about a year ago and I pulled that in. It's uh, like valet. And this guy went to go jump in it. He looks, he goes, oh, it's a stick shift. And he went, had to get somebody else to go and park it because he didn't know how to drive a stick. Yeah, it's it's not pretty common nowadays. So at least motorcycles are still manual transmission. So you get the basics and that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got to get some cool projects rolling here. Skateboarding, motorcycles, skydiving. <laughs> Have you ridden a stand up jet ski? No, not a stand up. Oh, that we're going to make. I got a new one coming from Kawasaki in the next couple of weeks uh, for the summer. Um, y- you need to do that. Like, no, that would, that would actually be fun. So Addie had never ridden a stand up and let into last summer. I had, had one and uh, she jumped on it and because she's lightweight, she just stood up right away and just went like nothing. And I'm like, seriously, kid. Well, somebody like your dad or I like that have some weight to us. It's pretty tough, but I think you're pretty lightweight. You would take onto it pretty, pretty quick and easy. It's different. It's like, once you get your balance, it's fun as hell, but it's like, it takes you a good 20, 30 minutes to kind of figure out your balance and things like that. And once you do and kind of figure out how it moves and, I think that that would be fun. And the, the good thing about a standup is if you crash, you're just falling into the water. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. At least. So I think definitely we, have to make some trips out to Parker then. <laughs> yeah, we need to make that happen and we'll, we'll do it fun. We'll have you try it and then we'll have Jordan watch him just be a complete nightmare and you'll be better at it than him. So. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. This sounds, I like this. <laughs> uh, trust me. He will be way worse than you and there's no getting around it. So you'll have a feather. in your head. I'm pretty uncoordinated and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it a challenge. <laughs> it's so crazy because I came from cheerleading, gymnastics, like all of that, but I'm pretty uncoordinated when it comes to most things. So here's a question. Cause I've seen like, you know how to dance in, in cheer. That's like, but can you dance like nightclub dance? Like, are you like, you can choreograph like a cheer dance, but like if you actually go to say a nightclub or something like that, can Mia dance? Oh, absolutely not. I actually have a pretty funny story. Okay. So uh, when we had the Texas Ranch Scramble, the Red Bull team had put together like a fun night out like before like the weekend started. And so it was like me, my teammate, AJ Jones, and then Pleasant Cook and like a bunch of other people. And uh, they took us around like the whole town 
and we go into like some of these places and they have like country music and they're like dancing and all this and pleasant tries to drag me out to go dance and i'm like dude i don't i don't know how to dance like i don't dance so she she finally drags me out there and i forget what it's called she teaches me something i think it was like a, a like very beginner like swing dancing thing okay. could not grasp it didn't understand it <laughs> It was like this race car driver, like over here trying to dance. Somebody should have videoed it because it was so entertaining. So your dancing days are over. That's funny. You can dance yeah. to choreography in that, but like, no, no the steering wheel. No, <laughs> it just does not feel natural. <laughs> I would think with the cheer and everything, at least like hip hop dancing, you'd have some semblance of skills at. I mean, very, very minimal. It's just so different when, like, you're learning a dance and you have to memorize it and it's the same dance, like, over and over again. But, like, to go do it for fun and, like, I don't know. It's just different. All right. So, James, I know at some point you're going to watch this video or listen to this. James from Red Bull. We want to collaborate Mia with the Red Bull breakdancing team. I, I want to see her do head spins. Like, that's the next collaboration. <laughs> we'll throw them in a UTV and Mia goes breakdancing. That's going to happen. Oh, that's going to be so embarrassing. I'm going to have to go train for like months before. <laughs> so I've got one, I've got one break dance move in my, uh, in my, in my back pocket and I'll bust it out at weddings and stuff. I can do the back spins where you go and you just spin on your back and you literally just like, it's like a turtle on its shell when it's upside down. Like I can actually do that. And I'm really, really hella good at it. And it looks pro level. It's the only break dance move I can do. And I learned it when I was like in fifth or sixth grade, some some guy taught it to me and I still can do it. And so it's just funny. Like I'll, I'll literally, I'll be sitting on the sidelines the right mood will be at a wedding or something like that. And I'll just go to the middle of the dance floor, bust that out. Everybody go, what the hell just happened? I'll just go back and sit down with my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I have one move. Curious. I want to see this. I want to see this. <laughs> I, I will bust it out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's gotta happen. <laughs> I will do it. It's like somebody that knows the worm and that's all they can do. And once in a while, they'll just bust out the worm and then they'll be done. And they're like, where'd that come from? That's, that's me with my one break dance move. <laughs> I wonder if my dad knows anything like that. Your dad's got stories and skills. I bet on a bunch of stuff. We don't even know. I know. I feel like there's so much. I don't know about like what he can do. We're going to have to figure this out. Uh, yeah. Cause he guards it all like a lock box. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do love once in a while I'll see like a picture of your dad when he was like 18 or something. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a totally different person. <laughs> uh, oh, completely different. You're like, is that the same guy? Yep. Yeah. Is. He's starting to get back into it, like with the purchase with the motorcycle and stuff. He's coming, his younger self is coming out a little bit. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I was I was shocked to find out he drank beer again. I was like, all right, high five, Joe. Yeah, I know. I know. The motorcycle was funny because the day of, he was like, can you take me over to, to this guy's house? And there's somebody in our town. And I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I bought a motorcycle. I was like, when? <laughs> I've never heard you express wanting a motorcycle. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see him getting back to do some some of the things he likes. Yeah. Like I said, I know your dad's bucket list is one of those 450 three-wheelers where they take the brand new 450 dirt bikes and convert them to a three-wheeler. So it's like I said, when you get your first million dollar deal, you got to buy your dad one of those 450 three-wheelers. Like it, most people are like, oh, I'm going to buy my parents a house. I'm going to buy my parents this. I'm going to do this for my parents. <laughs> like, you know, your dad just wants a three-wheeler. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely got to happen. I think it's his dream to have like a whole like room or like shop area, just like three wheelers just stacked down the line. <laughs> you guys have like a three wheeler museum already. Like we do in our backyard. Yeah. They're missing, they're missing a shop or something. <laughs> the funny thing is, is all those three wheelers are worth more than all your race cars. I know. I know. They hold their value really well. <laughs> no, I was like, I laughed because I was like, where was I? I was at the off road swap and there was a bunch of three wheelers and stuff. I'm like, these things are bringing that much money. Holy crap. Yeah. Joe Chapman's three wheelers are worth more than the house he's living in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because he always finds like the best deals on them. Like, whenever we like go back to Wisconsin, like, yeah. Um, that yeah. Race, the yeah, kid was like, riding around and your dad bought it off the kid riding it around. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and then he bought one from like some guy that lived pretty close. Yeah, he he finds the deals for sure. Yeah, has he been that way your whole life? Yes. Just random stuff popping up. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any of that? Did any of the Joe Chapman, uh, you know, I guess Wheeler and Dealer drop into Mia Chapman's blood? Oh uh, gosh, I'm trying to think. Not really. I do. I do it more with like animals. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like we I had. What's more expensive, power sports or animals? Like. Oh yeah, we now well we now have four French bulldogs living in our house. So. Four. Four. I knew of three. I didn't know of four. Yeah, yeah. Like we had um, the first one we got for, that was my dog, which my dad kind of steals all the time, but. Yeah, we had her, and then we got a boy, like, a couple years later, and then just recently, like, I think four months ago, um, our family friend was going through some stuff, so he had two French Bulldogs, and we kind of, we took them over, both boys, and they're, like, two and three. So you so. got three boys and one girl now? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Our house is very busy. <laughs> very loud, too. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Note to self or note to everybody listening. Mia Chapman loves French bulldogs. She hates moths. <laughs> oh, don't tell them I hate moths, and everybody's gonna bring moths over to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though. Like, right? I don't know what it is. Like right now around Parker, but like there's moths. It must be that time of the year or something like that. The moths are all over, and like I keep finding dead ones outside, and I'm just like, every time I see a moth, I think of you. Whether they're dead <laughs> or alive, it's literally from now until the day I die, I will just think of Mia Chapman. So, I don't know there's, that's good or bad, but it's just <laughs> word association. Moth. Yeah, word association. Now, somebody says moth, I go Mia Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hilarious i know so many people that are like that like jimmy same way it's like every time i like see or hear a moth like i can't help but think of you now <laughs> uh, what is there like there's that superhero moth man or something like that i think and like it's like i said red bull does all these custom helmets i'm like sarcastically i'm like i want to see them like put like ghost a bunch of moths metallic moths into the paint or something just because like uh-uh that gives me chills just thinking about it I don't know. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. You couldn't do it. You're not a moth. Like, there's no part of it, even like a cartoon moth, nothing. Just. Nope. No part of that. How about butterflies? Uh, I don't mind them. I really don't like them as much, though. Like, they kind of creep me out a little bit. See, know. butterflies creep me out more than moths because butterflies, the wings are pretty, the body is ugly. And I'm like, at least a moth is just pure ugly. I'm like, but a butterfly masquerades is like, a, it's just like, it's as ugly as a moth, but it's just got like paint on its wings. I'm like, butterflies, everybody's like, oh, they're beautiful. I'm like, no, it's just kind of a prettier moth. Like they're both kind of ugly. At least the moth is like, owns it. The butterfly uh -huh. kind of hides it. I don't know. Something about like the thickness and like dustiness and grossness of a moth is just, I don't know. I'm just not a bug person in general, though, to be honest with you. So there. No, I don't know if it's like that in Parker, but here, like we have these big, I think they're called mosquito. I don't know. They like eat mosquitoes, but they're like 10 times the, well, not 10 times, more like five times like the, the size of a regular mosquito. Super like long dangly legs. Like they're really creepy. That's so like a we, mosquito on steroids. Yeah. Like all oh. around like our part. So we can't like leave lights on or anything. So if you walk outside, then there's just like a swarm of them. Holy crap. So, I mean, a mosquito leaves a red, leaves a red bump when it bites you. What does one of those leave when it bites you? I guess it's called like a mosquito hawk. So the, apparently they don't bite humans. I don't know if I really believe that because they look exactly like a mosquito, just a little more terrifying, but I don't know. I haven't been bitten by one yet. So that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> You need to trap one. I want to see one of these. I want a picture of one. I will. They're so uh, like weird looking. I've never seen them until like this year. Yeah. So so Mia, me and her dad have a group chat for everybody tuning in. And I think sometimes Mia, Mia I think, looks at everything that's going on. But sometimes she ignores it and acts like she doesn't get the text. Because Joe and I will go down rabbit holes. And it's just like, I think Mia's just like, oh, God. What are, what are these people doing? So now I think it's going to turn to weird bugs in the group chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that group chat is very entertaining. It's 
got a wide variety of things. And yes, yeah, sometimes I just sit back and like just read everything and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> And then once in a while, I'll throw weird liners in, like completely throw me under the bus on purpose just to see if I can get like a rise out of her, a comment. And then like, it'll be one of those like instantly, five seconds later, she'll chime in and I'll be like, yeah, I knew she was paying attention. She just hasn't responded in five days. <laughs> I'm terrible with responding back. Like, you got to call me. <laughs> I'll like look at it and mean to text something back and then just totally forget I will say that. I give you credit. If I text you, I might not get a response. If I call you, almost always pick up. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, everybody kind of knows that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we are way down a rabbit hole now for the last 15 minutes. I don't even know. So you got New Jersey coming up this week. And then after that, what do we got? I think in June. Well, you turn around. So this is crazy. So you got New Jersey and then you turn around two weeks later. And is it Utah? I get yeah. to yeah, Red Bull's got those back to back. So you're really racing. And what's the weekend in between? Do you have anything the weekend in between? I think I do. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a sponsor event. I'm not too sure. I have to go back and look. But yeah, everything's pretty packed in. Like this whole last month from what did we start at? We started with the Texas Ranch Scramble. The weekend after that, I went out to the Red Bull Athlete Performance Center for a week. Yeah, how was that? Because we talked about you wanting to go there for, I mean, it's been for quite a few years. How was that? So they have some of the best, I mean, trainers in the world there. Yeah, no, it's super cool. Like when I first got there, they have an athlete house that obviously for like the athletes that aren't, don't live in the California area, we can go and stay there. Um, so that's where I stayed. And then the first day I went, I met with everybody and I really didn't know how much they had. Like, it's pretty insane. I met with a trainer. I met with a nutritionist. I met with a mental um, kind of coach, and they go through literally everything. Um, I met with an orthopedic where they check and make sure, like, you know, obviously your whole body's good so you can get to training. And I think there was, like, one other thing I can't remember. But, yeah, they have quite a bit that you can use while you're there. And it was super cool. I mean, they test you for everything make sure your body's in shape make sure like if you have any questions or you know like what you should be eating or how to eat right when like you're traveling on the road or like for me at races it's hard for me to eat because I get so wound up yeah so we got a plan of going like just different things that I could just eat really quickly and eat afterwards so like after I get done racing I don't feel so crappy um so yeah I did all of that and uh, had a lot of training sessions there with my trainer and it was cool because they sculpted this routine based around, like, what I do to help me get stronger in the areas I need them most. So, yeah, they do quite a bit there. It's it's pretty insane. Do they still have – last time I was there, and it's been quite a while. Was, um, do they still have the – what is it, like, the cryo chamber where you go in and, it like, uh, where it's, like, ice cold? Like, the – I think, like, your head's out of it, but it, like, blows – like, how, did they – do you know what I'm talking about? Like, do. yeah i don't think they do anymore no. they have like like the ice soak tubs which i okay. i did not utilize i don't like the cold but yeah anything you can think of like they have there but it's awesome even like if an, one of their athletes get hurt like if i was to get hurt um i could go over there and they'd help kind of get me back into shape and where i was and kind of like a like a rehab type of situation so Awesome. Cool. I didn't know. I didn't know until you went that the Red Bull had an athlete house. That's pretty rad. And there was just some other athletes staying there when you were there too, right? Yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, stay and they're like in and out. So I got to meet like a lot of different people from pretty much everything, like skateboarding, skydiving, surfing, like literally everything. That's rad. Yeah, <laughs> see me at and surfing. That's another thing we gotta. I do that. want to do that. I don't live anywhere where there's ocean, so like it's hard to really get into it. But that's that's definitely something I want to do. Have you uh, have you ever uh, wake surfed? Um, find a gosh, boat forever ago. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually my friend Crystal is uh, she's an amazing wake surfer, and she's uh, she's an instructor here in Parker, and that's who taught Addie how to wake surf and me. And I I'll take the lessons, but. Uh, I know Addie keeps going and she wants to come back. So, and literally you can do a, a two hour lesson with Crystal and she'll have you up dropping the rope, like wake surfing behind a boat, like within two hours. So we'll have to pick a weekend. Like we'll come ride jet skis and I'll, I'll talk to Crystal and we'll, 
me, you and Addy will go out and take a lesson on the boat, like wake surfing for, for a couple hours or something like that. It'd be fun. Yeah. That, that'd be fun for sure. A nice little ease into surfing. I feel like that that's gotta be easier than surfing. Yeah. Wake surfing. Yeah. yeah. Wake surfing is definitely easier than surfing, but it's funny. Cause once you're up, it's kind of the same, same general concept. So okay. I think it's actually would be a great segue into real surfing. So yeah. Good way yeah. to start. <laughs> well, we'll have to plan a weekend when everything calms down or whatever and just have you you guys come out and we'll just yeah jet ski and um do a little wake surfing and stuff be fun yeah for sure so all right well i don't know that's about all i got i know you're getting ready to go to new jersey and uh i'm actually getting ready to go camp on the river so oh, looks like we both got some fun stuff planned oh <laughs> yeah. well, then yeah. i gotta go to uh rally on the rocks up there in utah so oh okay okay yeah i love yeah. that it's like mellow rock crawling, not quite King of the Hammers rock crawling. I mean, it's a little intense, but it's fun. I enjoy that one. That's one I think I told your dad you guys would enjoy coming out to. It's like yeah. rock, crawling. rock crawling is a different beast, and I'm I'm new to it. I've done everything else in the UTV except for that, and well, I guess I haven't done the really deep mud stuff like Dustin, uh, yeah. Dustin Jones, those guys do down there in Louisiana. But um, no, it's like rock crawling is crazy. You're going two miles an hour. It's like white knuckle driving. I'm like, it's the weirdest, it's the weirdest, like adrenaline rush. I'm like, how is my heart pumping this hard going two miles an hour? I feel like that'd be something fun to like, just like co-drive in or just be in the passenger seat. I enjoy doing it once a year. It's not something I would want to do every single weekend, but (laughs) it's kind of like Glamis though. I like going to Glamis a couple times a year, but I don't want to do it every weekend. That's pretty fair. Yeah. Let me know how it goes. I, I enjoy it. So yeah, definitely. We'll <laughs> let you know how it goes though. But, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on Mia. Yeah, of course. It was nice to catch up. 